name is Sheila. I'm a naturalist from the Outdoor Discovery Center. I'm here today bringing you a virtual field trip uh, at the Hudsonville Nature Center. It's a pretty cool nature center. Uh, if you pan around, you can see it's starting to turn really green. If you tuned in like two weeks ago to Jamie and uh, Jennifer's wildflower walk, you might have noticed things looked a lot less green. So nature has started to spring up and it's really beautiful. Um, some of the species that we'll see today are similar to what Jamie and Jen saw. We've also got some new species that are starting to pop up. Um, so as we're going along, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to type them in on the comment section and then my husband, Nate, who's the cameraman, can read them out to me and I can answer. Um, but I wanted to get started, first of all, talking about why spring wildflowers are so unique. Um, so spring wildflowers only pop up during the months of maybe as early as February all the way into May. And the reason they pop up in the springtime has to do with the amount of sunlight they can get. If you look way out in the distance, you can see there's still some, well, gray skies right now, not any blue sky, but there's no leaf cover. And so right now the sun has direct access to the ground layer and all of those spring wildflowers are popping up leaves everywhere. So that way they can get all of that sunlight before the leaf cover and canopy uh, starts to furl out and block all of that sunlight. And so the plants we'll see today are some of the plants that it might take them a while to flower because they don't have enough energy from the sun yet. Um, and it's just really cool, their adaptations for limited sunlight and limited amounts of sunlight. So I wanted to start out by looking at some of these flowers, well, leaves on the ground. Uh, so if we go close, you can see there's this plant here. It's got three leaves. So you can maybe take a guess about what it is. If you look over here, there's another one starting to unfurl. If you have any guesses, go ahead and you can type them out. Um, but they've got three leaves, that's kind of a big clue, but it's also a little tricky if we come over here. We'll give you a time to guess if you want to guess. But if you look down here, there's those three leaves again. But then, if you look down here, you can see the flower. So a little bit tricky, this one is uh, Jack in the Pulpit. So it looks like there's a little person inside a pulpit there. That's how it got its name. Uh, this is the flower. It's green, and so it's not really very showy. It's really cool, though. They've got a spathe and a spadix. Uh, that is the spadix inside there, and then the spathe is the covering around it. They can be anywhere from like this pale green color to like a reddish green color as they're growing and maturing. Uh, and the leaf and then uh, the flower all come from a... Uh, a structure called the corm underground and that corm <laughs> uh, is the storage place where uh, as this leaf is gathering sunlight it can store that food that it makes down in the corm and then as the years go on it can use that uh, food to help grow the flowers so jack in the pulpit it's a pretty cool flower it's starting to uh, come up here and there we saw those little leaves before it's one of the later spring wildflowers that we can find so this was a really cool find um, this habitat here is a beech maple forest habitat and it's in a lowland and there's a lot of water nearby there's actually a stream running over this way you'll we'll probably cross by it uh, but that makes the soil really moist and wet and lots of these spring wildflowers need this habitat and love this habitat uh, if we come over here, I gotta find it. Found them. We've got, if we just look at all of these little leaves sticking up, and then we can come a little closer. We can see they're like the oval shaped leaf, and they've got this brown and green modeling on them. Uh, this is trout lily, same flower and plant that uh, Jen showed us earlier, but it got its name from looking like a trout scales and kind of shaped like a trout too. And then if we look over here, we actually have the flower. We saw the flowers that Jen showed. The flowers she saw were yellow. Uh, this one is a white trout lily. It's a different species. The only difference really is that it has the white petals instead of the yellow petals. But we've got a couple of them growing here. I think they're on the tail end of their growth or they're just kind of sleepy because it's not sunny and bright out. Uh, if we look over here, and I'll try not to step on any, you can see this one. All the petals are falling off and you can find that 
fruit and seed case starting to grow there. So eventually ants will come by and they'll take that seed and they'll carry it with them to their little underground hole and then that seed can grow into new trout lilies. Uh, if you noticed all of the leaves down here, they're actually trout lily, lily leaves. Um, it takes trout lilies about seven years to uh, fully mature and send up a flower. So what they're doing throughout this time is they're just sending up one single leaf to gather that sunlight and that energy and then they store that energy in the corm and then they die off after the canopy is fully formed. And then they'll do the same thing next year, just throw up one leaf and then they'll die off and then they'll eventually get enough energy to where they can send up two leaves, like this one right here and then a single flower that starts to grow. And so that's when you know it's been like seven years for that plant to start growing. It's quite amazing. So we'll keep on walking. Careful, don't trip. There's a log there. Uh, I wanna go here. So here is another plant. They're all going to be plants today, don't worry. <laughs> so this one here, it's got these little grass-shaped leaves. They're kind of thicker and they've got a single vein going right down that leaf there. Uh, and then when it's sunny out, you can see the flowers. They're closed right now, but when it's sunny they will actually open. And these flowers have five petals on them. And then if we look inside here, I'll be very gentle. They've got sort of whitish petals, and then they've got these pink veins going down them. Maybe. And then if you look very closely inside there, you can see the, the pink stamens. That's where the pollen is located. It's pink in there. It's really cool. They're a really delicate, small flower, uh, but there's a lot of them actually growing on this one plant here. So this plant has probably been established for a really long time. They grow back every single year. Uh, they do have seeds that are dispersed by animals, um, like mice or birds that will come by and then disperse the seeds and then they'll grow new plants. Uh, probably within the next year, they're not like the trillium and the trout lily that take many years to bloom and flower. Uh, but they can come back every single year and as you can see there's multiple stalks of flowers coming from that single corm there. Uh, the corm is edible. I would suggest not picking these flowers though because it does take them a long time to grow and bloom. Um, but you could eat them, other animals do too, and it's pretty delicious, I think. Uh, the trout lilies, I don't remember, I'm going to skip that, <laughs> so you can follow me this way. started to bloom here. That's quite wonderful. Adds a pop of color after that dreary winter. So here is a whole bunch of the same kind of plant. They've got these big leaves that have five different lobes on them. And then if we look over here, we've got the beautiful flower that's blooming. This is wild geranium. It's got five petals. They are pink uh, as opposed to the um, Spring Beauties white with pink veins. But these ones are just pink. They've also got a lot of stamens in there. I think 10 to 12 stamens, little pollen places. Uh, these ones when the, I think these are blooms right here. So after they're pollinated and grow their seeds, the seeds will actually uh, disperse not by animals, but um, they'll get shot out from the plant. And so they're dispersed by just basically explosions. So it's pretty nice for that plant there. There's a couple more wild geraniums here, you can see. They've got uh, a little bit of variation in the flowers. They can be like almost all purpley pink like this one here, to kind of like pink on the ends and then more white on the inside there. Uh, all of these lines in the flower that you can see, if you can come a little closer, 
all of those lines on that flower, they're actually basically like neon signs for the pollinators, showing them where the pollen is. So in ultraviolet lights, they might glow. So the lines there, it's pretty cool. What is pink multi-stem flower? Video froze during the naming of it. Oh, the pink multi-stem flower, that was uh, spring beauties. This one here you can see it's different than the um, what was Jack in the pulpit that we saw. It's got three leaves, but these leaves are shaped differently. They're much more like fat. Uh, and then if you look at the flower here too, this one is in the trillium family. It's different than uh, just the great white trillium. This is called drooping trillium gotta get it right. Uh, there is a species called nodding trillium which is very similar to this one. Uh, the nodding trillium has a longer stem right here attached to the flower. The flower will droop underneath the leaves. Uh, and then if you look here too at these stamens where the pollen would be, the stamens are twice as long as the little filaments that they're on. And so that's a way to tell them apart. But it's a really beautiful flower. You can see it's got three petals, three sepals, three leaves, hence the name Trillium. Uh, this one, according to the master naturalist of the Hudsonville Nature Center, this is the only stand of drooping Trillium in the entire park. So this was a really cool find that we managed to come across the other day. It's pretty cool. It's well established too. You can see there's quite a few different in this one spot. Uh, Trillium are a favorite food of white-tailed deer. It's like candy to them almost and they come by and it looks like someone's eaten the seed or the, the flower off of this one here. Cool. blooming here. I'm not sure exactly which species it is, uh, but these are violets. I've seen purple violets and yellow violets out here. They're pretty cool. They've got these heart-shaped leaves that are kind of serrated on the edge. And they've got nice pattern on the inside there showing where the nectar and uh, the pollen are for animals. This one, it's got a taller stem. It's a little bit of a taller plant, kind of wrinkly leaves. It's a little bit of a bluish tint to this one. And then the flowers on top here, they're really, really tiny. I don't know if you can see them. Mm -hmm. They're super tiny flowers. Uh, they've got just a little bit of yellow pollen on there, um, kind of yellowish leaves and petals to them. Uh, this plant here is called blue cohosh. It's a toxic plant, so don't eat it. It'll make you nauseous. Not good. <laughs> uh, it gets maybe like one to one and a half feet tall, so it's a little bit of a taller plant. Uh, when its seeds start to form, they're kind of like, they look almost like berries, and they turn a very bright blue. And so that's kind of why it got its name as well, aside from the bluish tint to its stem there. Uh, and those seeds are actually dispersed by birds most, most likely just because of the color and being a vibrant color those birds can see that really well and then they can eat it and then fly away and then they disperse it through their scat. Yeah. Jamie says smooth yellow violet maybe? Potentially. It could be. We'll take a picture of it and identify it later too. Up 
You can see the leaves haven't even unfurled yet and it's starting to flower. It's pretty cool. <laughs> exactly, Andrea. That's what I'm getting out of this too. <laughs> Don't eat the meat. I've been seeing a lot of these flowers as we're walking along. I wanted to show you a good specimen. Uh, you can see the leaves here. They've got lobes, like two to three lobes to them. They're smooth all the way around the leaf. And then if you look at the flowers, all of the flowers on this plant have five petals. Uh, because of that, I know this is false rue anemone. I'm going to double check that just to make sure. <laughs> don't want to give you wrong information. Um, the rue anemone and wood anemone all have plants that have more than five petals. Or sorry, flowers that have more than five petals. But the false rue anemone has just five on the entire plant. So looking at this, they all have five petals, and so I can tell that this one is a false rue anemone. They also don't have any whorled leaves or leaves that are like all the way around the stem. Um, wood anemone has leaves that are serrated on the edges, so they look like they have teeth on the edge. They've got a similar leaf shape, just glancing at it to a columbine. But the flower obviously is different. It doesn't hang down, it just sits right up. Cool. <coughs> I'll start here and see if you can find some later. Um, but if you look at these leaves here, it looks like someone took scissors to them and kind of cut them up. That's how I remember the name. It's cut leafed toothwort. Uh, the flowers here, you can see the leftovers, they had white petals. I think there's some down the trail that have the flowers still on them. Um, but they've got these really deeply lobed leaves. They've got at least five lobes to them. Uh, near the top they only have like three lobes. And they have three leaves and like each little set right here you can see. So one leaf, two leaf, three leaf. So cut leafed toothwort. So tiny! But this one is mostly green. We saw another one that was kind of reddish. If you look over here, we've got the classic Trillium. Trillium grandiflorum is its scientific name. But it's got those three leaves that the other trillium had, but the flower you can see is very different. It sits up rather than drooping. It's got very large petals compared to the other trillium that we had. Um, and that's why it's sometimes called giant white trillium. It's got lots and lots of yellow pollen right in the middle too. So trillium, it takes about five-ish years for the seeds to germinate underground so that for them to start actually growing roots and then and start uh, growing up leaves and then it takes another five years for them to be developed and then mature enough to send up a flower and so what they're doing before that they'll just send up the three leaves and call it good uh, and then once they gather enough energy stored in their roots then they can send up the flower because it does take them so long to send up a flower and reproduce, they're actually a very long-lived species. If deer don't get to them, they can live up to 25 years. It's pretty cool.
<laughs> so we just found these today. Uh, these are really pretty flowers. It's in the toothwort family, so similar to the cut-leafed toothwort. Uh, they both have four petals on their plant, four white petals on their flower, I should say. Uh, but the leaves are very different. They're not as deeply lobed. And they've got these more like fringed edges. And for each of the plants, there's only two leaves attached to them, while the cut-leafed toothwort had three leaves. Uh, toothwort got his name because uh, it was used way back for medicinal purposes for toothaches, so it would help relieve toothache pains. I don't suggest doing that now. I would suggest seeing a doctor and a dentist. They can probably relieve your pain better than plants can. Uh, if you look over here, we've got some of these leaves left over uh, from the Dutchman's breeches that were around here earlier. Uh, all of the Dutchman's breeches flowers have pretty much gone away. Uh, some of the flowers for some of these plants last for a couple of weeks, others only last for like a week, some last for only a day or two. We'll see if we can find one of the plants up here that was flowering when we came last week, uh, but is no longer flowering. to it. It's really cool. Kind of wrinkly leaf. Uh, it's actually pretty thick. Stores a lot of water. And then if you look down here, here is the seed. The seed heads. Not the flower um, buds, but the seed heads. This is blood root. When we came here last week, we saw the flower of this plant. The leaf hadn't yet furled out. It was just unraveling and unwrapping from that uh, flower bud. The flower is very beautiful. It's got these um, almost milky textured petals to them, and they're white. There's like 8 to 15 petals on the flower, and almost as soon as it starts to bloom and open up, uh, it will lose its petals right away. It only blooms for about a day or two, and then it's done. Um, and so we were lucky that we got a chance to see that. I was hoping that we would see some today, but sadly it's all done. blood root. Um, if we look just right here, there's a couple of these plants that are growing up on the ground here. There's uh, This stuff is all over the ground. Uh, it's a ground cover plant. It's wild leeks or ramps. Actually an edible plant. Tastes kind of like onions. It's in the onion family. It's got these red stems on the bottom here. Um, this is a spring plant it sends up its leaves in the spring and then its leaves will die off and then in the summer it sends up a flower so it's actually flowering while it doesn't have any leaves on it it's kind of cool um, in the summertime that's when it starts to flower and then it'll seed out late summer early fall cool I think I think that's all the plants that we had uh, feel free to come on out to the Hudsonville Nature Center it's open all day uh, and every day too. It's a really nice park to walk in. It's kind of, it's got some hilly areas and some low areas. Uh, feel free to go out to a couple of other parks too. Rabbit River Preserve I know has a lot of flowering plants and flowering wildflowers right now too. Uh, hopefully this video was informational for you and you can uh, start your own identification of these spring wildflowers. If you have any other questions or comments or anything else like that, feel free to post them and we can answer them. Uh, other than that, have a great day and thanks for tuning in.